Ryan Ellis becomes the fourth Canadian to win three World Junior medals, a gold and a couple of silvers. He joins Jay Bowmeister, Jason Spezza, and Jason Botterill, and afterwards he was asked, what went wrong? I think we just stopped skating, we stopped working hard, and we stopped doing the things that got us there. And uh, that, uh, that kind of hockey isn't going to get through any team. And I think uh, they turned it on. They're, they're a great hockey club. Give them credit. They, uh, they definitely outworked us in the third. The thing was, we didn't play. You know, we, we just, uh, you know, once they got that goal, our team uh, you know, didn't play the, the way we wanted. And obviously, uh, you know, it wasn't meant to be. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, that just shows that you got to play uh, 60 minutes in a hockey game. They were skating. We weren't. They were, they were moving pucks. They were, they were chipping the speed. They were doing all that, that little stuff that, that goes a long way. We didn't, uh, we didn't do that. We weren't, we weren't dumping pucks. We weren't chipping pucks. We were trying to beat guys one-on-one. -on -one, but uh, it sucks right now. It sucks a lot, but um, they're, a, they're a good team. Yeah, they are a good team, and so was uh, Team Canada. This is Sports Center. I'm Darren. She's Jen. We've never really seen anything uh, quite like this before. Uh, this is the tenth consecutive gold medal game for Canada, but uh, a collapse of um, huge proportions. Epic proportions. Yeah, yeah it really. was shocking. It was stunning. We've used all these words, but it's funny because when you look at what the Russians have done in this tournament. It's not only that surprising. No, They've right. been the cardiac kids in this tournament. They came back against Finland late in the game. They beat the Finns, and then had the dramatic overtime win against the Swedes in yep. the semifinals. So... They've, they've been doing this all tournament long. Right, and while we've never seen this at a World Junior before, there, there isn't a Canadian across this country who hasn't been in a hockey rink watching their sons or daughters or relatives or friends at some point in time, and you see a team, and it starts to go, yeah. and it goes, and the it goes, and, it, and, and all of a sudden, in a 15-minute period, it's over. You and got you're a 5-3 lead, and you're the Russians. <laughs> yeah, and you're celebrating. Uh, we've got more from Buffalo, much more analysis. Actually, now we will throw it back to James Duffy and the panel. Thank you. Back with Pierre Maguire and Bob McKenzie. When you win five gold medals in a row, as Canada did, I think you start to take it for granted and think it's easy in this tournament. The last two years have proven just how difficult it is. I can't think of two more crushing ways to lose than what happened last year in Saskatoon against the U.S. and then this collapse here. Uh, perspective. You said it's the worst ever, and you were in Helsinki in 2004. The 04 World Junior was bad. Canada 3-1 lead going into the third period and had a chance to extend the lead. You think about that Canadian team. It had a 16-year-old Sidney Crosby, a great leader like Mike Richards, Ryan Getzlaff, Marc-Andre Fleury, a Stanley Cup winning goaltender in net, but they ripped him apart, the Americans did, with Zach Parise, Patrick O'Sullivan in the third period, and this play will go down forever in hockey lore. Clearing it into Braden Colburn. Patrick O'Sullivan gets credit for the goal, and Marc Andre Fleury feels all kinds of shame. That was a bad collapse. I truly believe tonight is the worst international collapse I've ever seen for a Canadian team. The one thing I'll say is probably 10 or 20 years from now, people will remember that one more simply because it had that one moment, the, the Fleury pass that went into, the, into his own net, whereas this one was just 16 minutes of atrocity. Well, it was. And, and that you're right. It was 16 minutes in the third period that will go forever be known as the collapse. But the seeds of that collapse were actually planted a little bit in the second period. That's when the Russians started to get a little bit of their mojo. That's when they started to get a little momentum. When they started killing a penalty early in the second period, and they ended up with a better scoring chance on Team Canada than Team Canada had. And then the vaunted Canadian power play, which had been the bread and butter, which got them started in this hockey game, did not generate anything in that second period. 0 for 3, Canada was in the second period on the power play. And that's when the wind started to come out of the sails a little bit for Team Canada. People will say the turning point was somewhere in the third period. Maybe the first goal, maybe the second goal, but could be earlier. How about when Valeri Bragan decided to change goaltenders? And he says, you know what? I like what Sheikin's done for me in the tournament, but I'm going to Bobkoff because Bobkoff knows these players from the Ontario Hockey League. He knows about playing on small ice. And when they made that change, it was a huge thing. Canada had a chance to make it 4 nothing in the second period. Ryan Ellis has the puck. Zach Cassie in a wide open yawning net. Bob Kopp just comes into the game. It goes off the right post, past Bob Kopp, doesn't find the back of the net. And then what Bob just described, the penalty kill falling apart for Team Canada. Canada lost a little bit of the wind in their sails. They stopped for checking. The Russians stretched them out. And I really believe that was one of the turning points. And now, if they had won gold, we'd be talking about Braden Shen's performance for a long time as epic. And instead, it gets, kind of gets lost. It does get a little bit lost in the shuffle, but it shouldn't. I mean, to score as many points as he did, to tie Dale McCourt for the most prolific World Junior Tournament by a Canadian ever is really something. 
and all the more remarkable because this guy's beat up and beat up badly. And he did everything for Team Canada. He scored goals. He made plays. That hit against Sweden, he got dinged up. He has a bad shoulder and played through a lot of pain and really heroic effort by Braden Shen. And on that same shift that he got dinged up, he came back to set up that goal. He gets a goal in this hockey game tonight. Uh, you can't say enough about what Braden Shen, who went to the Los Angeles Kings, to the Manchester Monarchs, back to the Brandon Wheat Kings, before he got to Team Canada, did in this tournament. Uh, the hero for Russia, there's a bunch of them in this game, but Evgeny Kuznetsov, who started it against the Finns with three points in a 10-minute span that really beat the Finns single-handedly, uh, he is now the Jordan Eberle of Russia as the Russians take home gold. Yeah, Canada's still atop with 15 goals, but Russia's now won nine goals since 1982. Canada and Russia have won 24 of the last 30 gold medals. Since the current format was adopted in 95, Canada 4-4 four four now against Russia in the gold medal game, which is kind of surprising. 500 against Russia.